Yeah, but if you guys are ready, go ahead and lay back. The blocks don't necessarily have to be close by, but that strap with the looped around, go ahead and have that one close. Good. So laying back, make the body comfortable. Let some good deep breaths flow. Huge inhales, nice exhales. Feel the body relaxing as we're here. <sighs> as we're here, letting some good deep breaths flow, the intention that we're working on is the idea of where we are now versus where we can one day see ourselves sometimes seems like a huge leap. It's like crossing the Grand Canyon. It's just such a big step. It seems like we'll just kind of fall if we take that, that leap on our own. And so our class today, we're focused on especially hamstrings, helping to lengthen our stride so that we could kind of bridge that gap. But we'll also be helping out the heart space and the quads just opening up some of these major areas of the body so that in working for our goals coming up in the future, we can imagine that it is possible. This is within my reach. Even if it's just lengthening my stride today a little bit more, it'll, we'll get there. We'll get there one day, especially with this excitement of new year, blank slate, fresh start, it's a good time to start thinking about what what are my goals that make me stretch a little bit, that make me be just a little bit more than I was yesterday. And so that's our intention that will lead us into our class today. So with that, go ahead and start taking the knees into the chest. And start off with just easy little circles, working on rocking around that low back and hip area. Tune in with that, rock it, breathe with it. Good. We'll allow our core to warm up just a little bit before we get into our first nice uh, stretch for the hamstrings. So let your right leg straighten up to sky, hands can help it, and then left leg hovers above ground. And we're gonna just do some nice little straight leg switches. So when the left leg comes up, hands can go on it. And then switch back to the right leg, have straight legs each time, just gently going back and forth. This warms up the core. This gets those hamstring muscles engaged. Just a couple of easy times back and forth. This can be fast for some it can be slow for some people. If you use the hands, it's a little easier. If you decide to release hands, it makes it a little more challenging. We'll take it just a few more rounds each side, getting the body warmed up for class. I'll count out three more rounds. It's okay if some of us are a little faster. But three for each leg here is three. And three, two, and two, one, and one. Good work. Now as you allow the legs to come to a rest place, we're gonna start hooking up this huge loop of our strap. So if you haven't looped your strap yet, hook it around so you only have a little bit hanging out. You're laying back, you're gonna end up with the right ball of foot around one end, and then the back of the neck around, or the back of the head around the other end. You wanna make sure it doesn't slip off the top of the head. It's not too high. It's also not too low to where that can just fall mm -hmm. back. This should set up kind of like a hammock where you've got uh, a neck stretch and a hamstring stretch at the same time. It, the other leg can just be rested down. Length. Um, of the left leg on the ground makes it a little deeper. And if you want just a hair more, you can always tighten up your loop and that'll make the leg get <coughs> even more. So you choose the depth 
you choose the length. Get it to that spot that feels like a good hamstring opener. You also don't want the buckle directly behind the head. Have it a little off to the side. And we're just giving this right leg a couple of good breaths to stretch out. I love this stretch because it's restorative. It doesn't take too much effort. But yet I can feel that length starting to get brought into my body. Fun breathing will take about three more cycles, but they're slow breaths. Inhales. Sex hells. Another two. Last huge breath in. Out. Good. I like to support my neck as I'm transitioning to the second leg. So grab onto each side, step the left foot in, and start dropping the right foot out. Good. And let this leg be just as relaxed in that nice hamstring opener. Giving it time, giving it space. The more I can lengthen through the backside of the knee, the more the hamstrings receive the stretch. Sometimes it's more intense right at the beginning just because the muscle fibers are not quite as willing to, to be right there in the stretch. So if that's the case, just take some breaths. Imagine the muscles softening a little bit more with each subsequent breath. Take one more huge breath in and out. Good. As you start to release this foot out, keep the hands supporting the neck lift with just the arm strength. And so with that, we're going to be able to ease a little bit into the neck. When you pull one hand slightly forward, it rocks the head a little bit to the other side. And then pull the other hand, just gently rock the head back and forth a few rounds. I like to imagine this is kind of like milking out that neck, helping some of those muscle fibers remember how to connect with others. Good. So we go ahead and set the strap all the way up to the side. Take the right knee back into the chest. Give it a good hug. And then pull that right knee into the twist. Cross it over the body to left. I like to keep the upper body spread open so that my whole back is getting a good, a good chance to start stretching and waking up. One more breath here on this half. Good, start to ease this right leg back down, dropping foot to floor, slide it long. Left knee will come in. Give it a hug for just a moment. And invite it across the body toward the right. Keep the upper body spreading open. Huge inhale, nice exhale, unwind out of the twist, drop this leg long to ground, 
We'll do a roll up to come up to a seated position. So stretch the arms up overhead, take a huge inhale. Exhale, lift the arms, lift the shoulders, even grab to thighs if you need to, to come all the way up to sit. We'll continue into a forward fold over those legs. If you'd like to hook the strap around the feet to give your hands something to grab onto and help to pull you forward, that's fine. You can also just grab onto feet or just rest the arms down, whatever feels useful. So how this is adding in a little bit more of the back to that hamstring stretch that we were playing with before. Now the back has this natural tendency to be rounded forward. See if we can still be tilted forward, but find a little bit more length through the spine. I'm imagining that today as one of those bridge connections, kind of like the legs are going to work towards splits. It's like the spine is also trying to work its way a bit straighter. Feel how that pulls the hamstrings a little bit more. So then from here to help the upper back just a little bit, anchor the right hand. You can either anchor right hand on a foot or leg, or if you've got the strap, just grab both ends of the strap and right hand. Left hand is free, so circle it up to sky, circle it all the way back. Inhale to start returning up and forward. Take two more rounds with this left arm up and back all the way forward. This last one, stay twisted back just a little bit longer. Good. Start to return forward. As it's forward, anchor left hand, whether it's around the strap or on the foot. Right hand takes the three cycles up and back. Return. And repeat two. Last one is the one we stay just a little bit longer in that twist. Good, return all the way forward. Take a huge breath in and out. We can start to release strap off to side. If you were using it, slide bottoms of feet into cobbler. Just feel how the hips and the spine can have perhaps even more space as we tilt forward. Where we wrap up in this shape, once again, find that length to the spine if it had that natural tendency to round. Just feel how that changes some of the muscles that we're engaging. And one more breath. Huge inhale. Nice exhale. Good. Spine lifts up. Swing the legs underneath us. We're going to start off with a nice high kneeling spot. So from the high spot, we're going to begin our first back bend. We're going to include plenty of back bends today. Note that on our back bend options, the hands have basically three choices. So option one would be just hands on hips. Option two, hands grabbing for elbows. Option three, prayer position flipped up. So anytime we're doing back bends today, just play with any of those options. Choose the one that's gonna work best for this one. Lift the heart up, lift the chin up. It doesn't have to be super deep for this first one. Sometimes the first one's just starting to open some of those muscles. Take one more good breath in. Doubt, come back up to stacked. 
The right leg opens out to the floor on the right side. Drop the right hand, sliding down that right leg. Left hand reaches up to sky to lean over, create some space, some chest, heart. Good. As the torso rises back up, the left hand continues to plant all the way to the left side. Note you want the hips to stay over the knees. Sometimes I see people, people leaning too far over. And then this is going to be a kneeling half moon. So right hand up, right leg up. The right leg is going to do five little circles about tennis ball size. So let's take five, four, three, two, one. Reverse the circle direction. Five, four, three, two, one. Either stay or try to get the right hand to grab right foot behind your back. Our first quad stretch. To just fill the quad stretch, pull the knee backwards a little bit. If you'd also like the heart opener, push the foot into the hand and just arch the heart back. Good. One more inhale. Exhale, unwind. So usually open back out and then softly rise up. The knee can be down. Second side, left foot slides up to the left. Left hand goes down the leg. Right hand reach up. To lean over. Good. Rising up, it's the kneeling half moon. Right hand plants to the side. Left hand and left foot are floating. Okay, when we feel stable, tennis ball circles. Here's five, four, three, two, one reverse, five, four, three, two, one. Maybe you stay, maybe left hand grabs left foot. If you can continue to push the foot back, that nice heart open. I love how connected the heart is to the quads. Some of these stretches go hand in hand. Good, one more huge inhale. Exhale, start to release back open. And as we rise up, both knees are down. Let's take one more of those camel variations. So maybe hands to hips or choose elbows or the prayer position flip. Take that good back bend. Good, lifting up, puppy pose. The hands come right under shoulders. Continue to walk the arms forward, but leave the hips over the knees. Some people drop forehead down. Some people drop chin down. Either way, it's the heart trying to arch this way all the way open. Good. One more good breath. Let it flow in. Out. And then walk the hands backwards until you end up in a nice child pose. It's nice and easy, especially after those heart openers. It feels good to let the spine be a little bit more in the round and forward position. Get some easy breaths. Perhaps you stay in the child pose a little longer. Maybe you're ready for downward facing dog at this point. When you get to that point, you're satisfied, you're ready. Start to let the legs reach up, hips reach high. I usually do a couple of easy movements for the knees back and forth. The first couple of breaths here.
Beautiful. So from here, float the right leg up to sky. Let's step that right foot in between hands and lower the back knee to the earth. This is a good point where we can start taking the blocks under our hands. And we're gonna be, begin with a little lunge shape here. So the front knee is bent. The knee doesn't go past toes. So if that's happening, scoot the foot forward. But by using blocks under hands, we're able to actually allow heart to be a lot more lifted and you can feel the stretch across the front of the left hip. A couple of easy breaths to help open up that spot. See the heart, allowing it to drop forward. We're transitioning from here into half split. So the front leg works its way straighter. The first one, go ahead and just release the spine down. So if that means bump the height of the block down or even scoop blocks aside for this moment, those are okay. from here to a pyramid pose. So the front foot gets its way planted again. Tuck the back toes, we're planting that back foot, and we're immediately in a spot where both legs are straight. Now, try to feel the sensation here of lengthening the spine forward rather than doing the rounded version. So this is again one of those points kind of like where the spine itself is a bridge. Front leg is trying to lengthen its way a bit longer. That doesn't mean lock or hyperextend the knee, but bring it to that really good long shape. in the front knee. The blocks can scoot a little bit off to the side. We're rising up, taking one of those back bends. So as the front knee is bent like warrior one, maybe hands are at the hips, maybe elbows, maybe prayer position, but feel the heart rise up. The chest comes back upright. As you shift your weight onto that front foot, we're going to try to find a balance, grabbing left hand to left foot. This is a quad stretch, so nothing too intense here. If you need more, the knee gets pulled slightly back or the tailbone scoops under. Go ahead and drop that foot down. Circle arms up to sky, huge inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale easy, lengthen the spine forward. Exhale, plant the hands, travel the feet back. Your choice, child pose, down dog, or a full flow. The flow is that chaturanga to cobra to down dog. Good. So just as much patience for the second side as we're continuing to find length. Float the left leg up to sky, reach it high. And step that foot in between hands, lowering back knee down. Test your foot position as you sink the weight of the hips forward. Just make sure the knee doesn't go past toes. Might be nice to have that block so that you can feel a little bit of the heart 
learning experience as well. Another huge breath, close in. And out. Good. To the half split, go ahead and allow spine to be rounded forward if you'd like here. We're gradually helping those hamstrings to go longer and longer. Very soon we'll start to play with some of the split variations. Sinking that foot just a little bit deeper in this experience. to pyramid so the front foot gets planted the back foot as it finds the ground it's all the way flat on the floor short and stance if needed two straight legs try to find length in spine really tune into the muscle fibers trying to keep the leg going longer and longer More good breath flows in. And out. Soften the front knee to a bent shape. Sweep the arms up to sky, warrior one. Choose your back bend option, hands to hips. Grab elbows or the prayer position flip. Lift the heart up. Good. Rising the heart back up to neutral. We're shifting our weight onto front foot. As we do that, try to see if you can grab the right hand to the right foot behind your back. Quad stretch. So if you don't feel that, pull the knee backwards or scoop the tailbone under. See if you can find steadiness. Through the gaze, setting this through the foot. Two more breaths. Good. Release down. If the blocks are too narrow, scoot them off. And then we'll circle arms up to sky. Inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Find that length. Exhale as we plant the hands down, travel the legs back into plank or kneeling plank. And we're taking stinks. So lower down to belly, slide the elbows right under the shoulders, and take a moment to be in the back bend for stinks. So the hands drag toward you without actually moving. Instead, that pulls the heart and the chest through. Good, so Sphinx's elbows resting. Now swivel the left hand in to prop you up. Right hand reaches back for your right foot for quad stretch. Try to pull the foot as close to glute as it'll comfortably go without hurting me. Another huge breath, let it flow in, out, release the foot, switch out the arms, right is in front, left is grabbing the foot behind. Now 
Another huge inhale. Exhale, release. Just one more breath through Sphinx. Try to pull the heart through. And then either take child pose or straight to down dog. Your choice. So heading up to down dog to transition on. We're adding a little bit onto some of the poses we were just playing with. Float the right leg up to sky, reach it high. Step right foot in between hands. Sink the hips forward, perhaps walk on your hands. Back knee down. For this one, you have an option if you wish to take right hand to the back toes. Sometimes that's a little too intense, so you don't have to. But adding in that quad option if you want. Otherwise, just keep the heart opening. Good. If you chose the quad stretch, release. Take it to half split or let the foot go a bit further forward this time. A little closer to full splits. Doesn't have to be the deepest one of the day. I love how the blocks help my chest to stay open through the splits. Like we're creating that bridge from the past self to the future self. And here we are enjoying it right there in the middle. One more breath in and out. The front foot slides to a place where it's planted. We're going to pyramid. So two straight legs, the entirety of the both feet are planted and feel the length of the spine bridging forward as well. See if that front leg has just a little bit more length. Good. And then we're taking it to standing split, bumping the blocks about a foot forward, left leg floats. With a slight bend to the elbows, you can feel the torso getting closer to that right thigh. Left toes tap the ground for three and float back up, two, One, good. And then we're transitioning to half moon from here. So the right hand slides with the block a little wider to the right. Get the hip to stack, get the shoulder to stack, left leg and left arm floating. Here's an option, you don't have to take it because it is a challenge, but option for left hand to grab left foot behind your back, standing. It does affect the balance, so you don't have to. Good. Floating open if you took candy cane, drop the left hand down to glove. And we're going to try to balance our way up. So bend the left knee to the nose. It's like a flamingo. And then see if you can rise up with balance. Going straight to the quad stretch again. So left hand to left foot. Just another breath to be here. Huge inhale. Good work. Exhale, release. And let's take a flow when you're ready. So inhale, circle up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, travel back, child pose down dog or the flow. Whatever preps you for second side, the best. Good work. Let's start to float left leg up to sky. Left foot steps in between hands. 
We're in the lunge, the back knee can lower to floor. Maybe blocks under hands. Maybe left hand grabs the back toes. So how these slow moments are the, the chance for us to catch our breath. Good. As we start to ease out, we're taking it to half slit or maybe about halfway toward our deepest expression of full slit. Just a little further, doesn't have to force anything. One more breath, huge inhale, exhale, scoop the foot in to take pyramid, both legs straighten, spine is lengthening forward. The how the length of the spine can, can kind of grab onto the sitting bones and then pull the hamstrings just a little bit more. Okay, so standing split, blocks, bump forward, right leg floats. Maybe the elbows are a little bit bent. Of course, I'm tilting down toward thigh. If they bent, feel free to re-straighten for half moon. Left hand slides to the left, another foot or so. That's what creates more of a strong triangle shape. Right arm and leg float. Option for candy cane if you want. Right hand to right foot behind your back. Good. If you connect it, a little back bend is fun. Amazing. Open back up. Drop right hand down, back to standing split. We're going to try to flamingo our way up. So right knee to nose. If at all possible, try not to get the foot on the ground as we rise our way up. Good. One more quad stretch on this half. <laughs> Keep the breath flowing. We're doing good. We're getting toward the end of class, so things are going to start slowing down, I promise. Good. And release. Let's take one little flow. Inhale, circle up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, planting hands, travel back, child pose down dog for the flow. Two more breaths wherever we are. Make our way back up to top of mat, forward fold. Begin inhale to rise, the next one. Hands to heart. Taking hands to hips, the prayer position slip or the elbow grip, arch the heart up and back. And heart rises. Grabbing onto our looped strap. We've got a couple of options to play with our, our uh, dancer's pose or king dancer. So dancer's pose just in itself would be a grip that's closer to the foot. And then you just allow yourself to kind of balance there. King dancer would be trying to take the strap over the shoulder first. And then two bent elbows above head and kicking foot into strap. So 
Play with whichever you think you have the balance for. You can always go close to wall if needed. It's just allowing quad and heart to open at the same time. Yep, even just grabbing foot for normal is perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. Good. Wherever you're at, take one more inhale. Exhale. Start to unwind. We can set strap down. Pull the right knee in front of us. Take back warrior three. Soft land to warrior one. Choose your back bend option as the front knee stays bent. So maybe hands to hips, grabbing elbows or prayer positions lift up. Heart arches up. Three times allow the front leg, leg to straighten and rebend. Two. And one. Good. Go to that straight shape. Straighten spine back up. Perhaps try to stay in a little bit of this heart opener because of the grip as we go to one more pyramid forward. Always know if you prefer to just drop hands to blocks like we've been playing with, that's also fine. more good inhale and exhale hands can release to floor or blocks lower the back knee down this is one last splits of the front foot forward so this one you're welcome to go the deepest yet maybe it scoots pretty far forward I personally love the option where if I can get my thigh low enough to rest a block under it I can just sit up and that even helps my torso to just stay kind of arched up a little bit more. So whatever you want this last one to be, even if it's just the normal half split that we we're playing with for first, that's fine. Got just a few more breaths. Deep inhales, exhales, two more cycles. Good. And as we transition out, the front foot is going to swivel in to pigeon pose shape. If you need to scoot the back leg back to get the hips to the normal pigeon pose, that's fine. And I'll let you choose what you want to play with for pigeon today. Maybe you're spending some time sleeping pigeon, just going directly down. Maybe you're staying lifted up. Maybe you even want one hand to grab for one foot behind your back for a quad stretch. So anything that just feels good here, you choose. to a recovery pose you choose what that is for some of us it might be going to child pose some of us might come to a kneeling shape allowing the hips to kind of wiggle themselves out some of us might go to down dog with some wiggles you choose Eventually, it'll be a transition back up to the top of the mat for the second side. So you choose perhaps when to go up to down dog, when to make our way up to forward fold at the top. And let's use our next inhale to rise all the way up. Hands to heart. 
We've got one more side with Dancer. Maybe you don't want strap at all. Maybe you want the strap to help connect hand and foot or strap to help connect King Dancer. So you choose. Allow that quad to open, allow the heart to arch forward. Keep the eyes open, looking at something not moving. Good. One more inhale. Exhale, soft release out, no falling. <laughs> Start to be set down. Slow the left knee in front of us. Warrior three. Soft land, warrior one. Hands choose that position behind us, maybe hips, maybe grabbing the elbows, maybe prayer position. Arch the heart up. Keeping the heart here, three times front leg straightens and bends. Two. One. And straightening it, torso rises normal up. Perhaps keep this arm position as we take our last pyramid. Or perhaps hands want to drop to block, nothing wrong with that. Feel this bridging the points, the person we were in the past, the person we're becoming in the future. more huge breath flows in and out we take the last split for that right leg forward so soften the back knee down scoot the front foot forward as much as it wants maybe slide block under thigh i love that one for keeping that heart open adjust as needed. Sometimes one side is super different than the other. Don't force anything. One more huge breath flows in. And out. As we scoop back, the front leg swivels into pigeon. You choose what to do. Maybe directly to sleeping pigeon. Maybe stay arched. Maybe grab the back toes for quad. More huge breath flows in and out. With our soft release, you choose the recovery here. Maybe same as before, maybe just a seated place. You get to choose. This is the beginning of the process of returning to Shavasana sooner or later. So some of us might take a couple more stretches to really get the body settled into that Shavasana shape. There might be a couple of things that need just some wiggles, windshield wiper type kind movements. My one recommendation prior to going to Shavasana, I recommend either taking bridge pose, so that's laying on the back, lifting the hips, or fish pose. Either can be done with or without the block. For instance, for fish pose with the block, you put it at the small height, bring the shoulder blades right over it, and then feel that heart have a couple of breaths to lift up and back for just a little while. 
So you choose whether bridge or fish feels better, but uh, envision when you're in either pose and you choose the duration of that pose, but envision that that's like that connection, that bridge between that past and that future. One more time, it's finding that beautiful distance. So you choose how long to stay. Some of us might love this. Some of us might be ready to drop down. There's other stretches that need to happen. Take them. Basically, this is our transition, listening to our body until we know it's time to rest, to relax, to come into the Shavasana state sooner or later. No sense of rush. But when we get to the Shavasana, imagine a bridge. In our mind's eye, just by breathing, we're connecting the bridge. It might be a rainbow bridge, kind of like the chakras connecting root to crown, or it might be more of like a visual bridge, like a place you've actually visited before. But imagine that bridge. And imagine it complete and connected. That bridge will lead us into this beautiful Shavasana. Several minutes here just to breathe, just to relax, to allow the body to open, comfortably surrendering down. Last
begin to deepen the inhales and the exhales. Introduce little movements back to fingers and toes. Ankles and wrists. Stretching the body out like we're waking up first thing in the morning. Perhaps choosing a fetal position to one side if you wish. Doing a few bonus breaths here, maybe three or four good huge cycles until you feel ready to rise sooner or later. Here with hands at heart, we reconnect to that simple idea of being able to bridge that gap between our past and our future selves by lengthening our stride, taking little, little steps that we need to do here day by day to help stretch ourselves so that one day we can reach that future vision we imagine. So with this idea to lead us on, let's wrap up the time we've Share it together with the sound of OM. Deep inhale now. May we be filled with light happiness and peace. Namaste.